and in gs2 i want to tell you if any question comes to write more points try to mention from these at least Hello everyone welcome to Plutus IS I am CS Sonali Jindal today we will take up GS economy GS3 previous year questions of 2023 so we will take up the mains 2023 GS3 economy questions firstly i want to tell you what is the marx distribution in GS3 for the economy four questions are asked from the economy section and in fact in this four more questions are asked from agriculture sector that is covered in the economic subject only and for the economy there are four questions one is first and second thereafter it is being asked in as 11th question and 12th question If you know the marks distribution in the mains you must know first 10 questions are of 10 marks each and in next 10 questions are of 15 marks each so if we multiply these 8 questions with these particular marks then it comes out to be 100 marks so basically around 100 marks of economy is being asked in gs3 it's basically percentage wise weightage would be 40% hence economy is important for the mains as around 100 marks it is being asked now moving to the first question first question and while analysis the previous year question i will also tell you why it is being asked whether it is mentioned in syllabus or it appeared in the current affairs or it was in basically previous years itself now first question says faster economic growth requires increased share of the manufacturing sector in the gdp particularly msmes while reading any of the question you need to see firstly it is targeting for achieving the faster economic growth it requires the increased share of the manufacturing sector and in fact in the manufacturing sector rather than the need of the basically large industries we need micro small medium industries so instead of large industries we need msmes in the manufacturing sector to achieve the higher economic growth and thereafter second part is comment on the present policies of the government in this regard although the main part of this question is commenting on the government policies but you have also have to write about the first line you have to prove this line as how the msmes can help in the faster economic growth before going into the question answer let me tell you it is being appeared in the previous year question for the numerous times where they have asked like there is a low growth in the manufacturing sector the other part was there jobless growth is there and industrial growth is lagging behind so somewhere we can drive this question from the previous year questions itself and the syllabus line also says indian economy and issues relating to the growth so basically as the issue in the growth it is the issue that the there is a lacking behind msme sector now let's discuss the answer of this question in this question you just need to prove what is the significance of msme first as it contributes around 30% to the gdp it's a high contribution then to the exports it contributes around 40% around 120 million people it employs in fact as we need the medium small industries it means it require basically less investment so with the less investment we can achieve the high growth and moreover these are basically labor intensive rather than the capital intensive so it can provide the lower capital output ratio that's why msmes are important 
this this way you can answer firstly you can tell about the significance of msms and the other part you can add what are the issues in it as you are going to write about the government policies if you would write about the issues then you can write these government policies in the effective way as for every issue basically government has brought the some of the policies for this i want to tell you why the industrial growth is not there or what kind of am problems msme face you can think of factors of production and every of the business faces those scarcity so basically land labor capital entrepreneur i hope these are the factors of production are clear to you in the capital we can further divide into fixed capital and working capital i hope the difference is also clear to you if you are not aware of this fact you can ask it this so in the fixed capital you can write about the long term capital like for example banking npas it is high so basically loan is not available to the industrial sector in fact due to npas banks are reluctant to give further loan and in the working capitals basically there are delays in the payments and they are facing in fact in this also you can mention about the india bangladesh issue there are also due to the crisis and instability in bangladesh our indian textile sector will be impacted our msme sector will be impacted for this government has brought trades platform for the discounting facility and you can mention about the labor like for example our labor is not skilled for the data you can quote nsso says only 2.98% formal skilling has happened and there are rigid labor reforms in fact one of the economic survey has mentioned there is a chakravyu challenge like once you can open a industry or any of the company but to exit from there there is a need of facing the chakravyu challenge you have to face that and so exit is not easy that's why we have wrote ibc insolvency bankruptcy code and then if we come to the basically land there are land acquisition delays and land scarcity is there because 17% of the world population is in india but only 2.4% of world's land these type of problems you can write apart from it we are facing the problem in technology adoption is poor in fact market information or the market integration is poor for the msmes most of the msmes are working in the informal sector they are not registered and in fact there is a problem that they are not basically upgrading itself because of the so incentives provided by the government so for the incentives to gain from the government they are not basically upgrading itself to the large industries so there is a problem of the missing middle for this also economic survey has mentioned regulatory forbearance i hope the whole scenario you are able to interlink with the four of the factors of production this way you can mention any of the problems in any kind of sector so after writing these of the issues you have to mention about the present policies of the government like for example make in india in this also basically government is working on basically branding of indian products and also working for the vocal for local so basically we are advertising the local products and this is also one district one product scheme then udyam portal to register the msmes and for the grievance redressal as well for the resist by the registration we can bring them into the formal sector then there is a open network digital commerce 
this is a basically to tackle the problem of big e-commerce businesses like for example there is a flipkart amazon how the msmes will basically compete with them to compete government has brought the open network digital commerce to provide the marketing facility to them and the other facilities will be also be available there and the other thing is startup india and the stand, stand up india i hope these are the policies of the government are clear to you but before that you need to basically write about the issues that we have discussed now second question it says what is the status of the digitization digitalization in the indian economy examine the problems faced in this regard and suggest the improvements i would say this question must have been prepared with the gs2 as the e governance has been mentioned there if you have prepared for this topic then you could be able to write about the problems in digitalization of the indian economy very conveniently so from the syllabus of other subject can also be helpful in other subject and the other thing is indian economy has been mentioned in the syllabus of gs3 specifically so any of the change in the happening in the indian economy will be basically important for you if it is impacting the whole economy as such so digitalization you can see it is impacting every sector of the economy and it is asking about the status you need to basically tell how we are moving towards the digital economy for this you need to firstly mention about the digital india program in 2014 it was brought it was brought also with the make in india then you can mention about the status of the digitalization like how the digital payments have grown it is mentioning that around 1 million billion per day there are transactions e-commerce you can mention about this this is around 175 billion dollars by 2025 and there is a smartphone and internet penetration then you can mention about the e-governance there are various government schemes or the government portals are operating digitally so this way you can mention about the digitalization for the problems you could have prepared in the e-governance this gives you a signal if you will prepare every topic of the basically main syllabus then it can be helpful in any of the other question but you need to be firstly understand the topic and try to keep revising them so that you may recall in the exam so what are the problems obviously infrastructure in fact for every question or the for every topic you can mention this words lack of infrastructure because we are developing economy and our basically setup is new and we are moving towards the new india in this obviously we will face some of the inf infrastructural issues so there is a digital infrastructure issues and in fact nsso has mentioned like around 40% of the urban area is having the digital infra and only 15% of the rural area any of the data you can drive once and try to keep memorizing them let me tell you if you will make a data sheet of at least only 50 points then it can be used in the multiple papers so you need to drive what kind of data is to be driven by you or not and next is digital literacy same there is a problem of the digital literacy that's why even if the digital india is moving and even the resources are available but our population are, is not able to use them efficiently even other problem is here is language most of the apps and the most of the data is available in the english language but most of the people are not able to understand that so the other problem is language issue and one of the thing is cyber security certain has mentioned there is around 400% rise in the basically complaint filing under the it act so cyber security issues are being rising there are cyber threats in fact there is a problem of social engineering 
you must have seen the basically a uh, one of the series called jam tara in which they have shown just by the by calling them they are able to take the otps and their atm details so you can mention about the jam tara web series and this is a concept of the social engineering by impacting them socially and tricking them with the words to track their records this is the cyber security or threats issue next is the data protection for this also basically certain has mentioned our aadhaar data is not secured there was a attack seen on the basically aims records there was attack on our basically major critical infrastructures so it can be linked to the cyber security but there is no proper data protection law available in india there is no consensus has been made on it this has to be brought because the right to privacy is secured under article 21 and in fact prelims upsc has asked this information for the twice next is the monopoly issue as you have seen only, now only google antitrust case is going on this also there is a monopoly issue as there are big tech giants they are having lot of data and they are able to manipulate in it due to this our small businessmen and small startups are not able to compete with them next comes the geographical issues as there are basically some landslides or the flood is happening then the our digitalization in is not happening like recently you can see the landslides of the wayanad that basically breaks the connection and creates the hindrance in the communication these are the issues you can mention moving to the next question see you can see the question number 11 so two of the questions we have discussed they were of 10 marks each and for the 10 marks each you will be given two pages you need to divide at least these 10 markers into the two of the dimensions so that you are able to fill these two pages very effectively now moving to the 11th question it is of 15 marks and for this you will be given three pages reading the question most of the unemployment in india is structural in nature so first keyword is the unemployment and it is saying it is a structural un unemployment examine the methodology adopted it is asking about the methodology to compute this unemployment and suggest the improvements all the question is asking about this thing like how the unemployment is being basically calculated and then you have to write about the improvements obviously there is a hidden dimension what it is like before writing about the improvements you have to write about the issues or you can make a chart where you can write one side you can show issues and the other side you can show the improvements but obviously before writing the way forward you have to write about the challenges or issues to write effectively and to gain more marks there is other another hidden dimension is also there you have to prove why the unemployment in india is structural in nature so if we basically divide this question into the dimensions first of the part is you have to prove why it is a structural unemployment there and second part is what is the methodology is to be used third you have to write about the issues fourth is the improvements but majority page distribution ma major space to be given is to these two parts because these are being asked very directly methodology and improvements so if you are given the three pages for it you can think to give one page to the first part structural and issues and two pages to methodology and improvements this way you can divide obviously you have to write about the introduction or conclusion as well that way you can divide your answer now let's start the answer of this question firstly how why what is structural unemployment you have to understand whenever there is a unemployment due to the structural shifts in the economy so whenever the structural shift 
is happening in the economy due to this if any unemployment comes for example we are moving towards the new technology it may be ai blockchain so basically if the there is a move to the new technology or the automation is happening so whatever the unemployment starting from here it will be structural unemployment next could be like for example after 1991 when the lpg happened liberalization privatization and basically lpg happened liberalization privatization and globalization in this also if we move to the services sector or the it sector with this if any unemployment happens it will be a structural unemployment because whenever the structural shift happen in the economy that creates a skill gap that creates a skill gap in the economy and it leads to the unemployment i hope you are able to understand what is the structural unemployment i want to give you some of the instances in fact according to ilo it has said 53% of the businesses are not able to recruit because of the skill gap like after 1991 you can see agriculture contribution dropped from 60% to 19% but it still employs 47% of the population on the other hand if we see services sector it basically used to contribute around independence era it was around 14% but now it's 54% but it employs only 19 to 20% of the population you can see how the shift has happened from the agriculture to the services sector directly we have missed the bus of manufacturing sector so the traditional route used to be agriculture to the industries and to the services but in india we move directly from the agriculture to the services as our industrial sector is still contributing only and only 27% to the gdp these are the numbers you need to prove like if the contribution of the industries is less than the services obviously services sector can't employ the people as much as industrial sector can employ in fact 19% contribution by the agriculture but it employs around 47 to the 48% population it shows there is a disguised unemployment it means there is a marginal productivity that is zero so agriculture is having marginal productivity i hope you are able to understand what is the structural unemployment and why there is a structural unemployment happened in india because we ignored our industrial sector and even if we move from the agriculture to the services sector but we have not provided the skills to the population as much as services sector required and in fact in the services sector we basically focused on the capital intensive industries for example in the services sector we ignored tourism sector hospitality sector education sector health sector our services sector is mostly com comprises of it industries this requires highly skilled population but this is not available in india that's why there is a structural unemployment i hope you are able to understand that next we are moving towards the next part that talks about the methodology firstly in brief we have already discussed but see why the structural employment is present and in gs2 i want to tell you if any question comes to write more points try to mention from these at least like you can mention one point from the poverty human resource here the skill development comes and then you can mention about the hunger health these are the four words that has been mentioned in the basically gs2 syllabus 
and in gs3 also these are to be interlinked so basically whenever the question comes on the poverty try to interlink with the other topics so that you can add on the dimensions for example here also you can write if there is no basically healthy population there basically compatible ability or the thinking ability will be less and they will not be able to perform better that way poor population will not be able to invest in the education and they are not able to get the vocational courses that's why there will be a skill gaps next the major problem is this there is a poor industry academy linkage so basically whatever is being taught in the colleges or the schools that is not basically very practical subjects and in fact when they go out of the college and if they basically sit in the industry interviews or something they basically used to know ki they are not basically directly employable they have to be given training so basically there is a industry academy linkage for this also government has brought the shreya scheme in which they are basically given the apprenticeship program in the industries and in this also you can write about the problem narayan murthy ji has said only over 420% of the engineers are actually employable next comes the concentration of the employment it is happening around agriculture that is not basically providing the enough employment and the other thing is it is available in the urban areas so 75% of the jobs are available in the urban areas but it is employing only 35% of the population because our majority india is still living in the rural area you can think know about the urbanization percentage it's around only 30% next comes a new technology we have discussed again the next point is low industrial growth and dependency on the services sector that has led to the structural unemployment moving to the next what are the measures to be used or the methodology to calculate the unemployment first is current daily status what it calculates basically so if even he, if he works for 4 hours a day he will be considered as a employed you can think even if he is employed for the 4 hours in a day he will be considered as employed so it can't be the correct measure next is the current weekly status here we are taking the daily status here we are taking the day, weekly so even if he is employed for one day in a week then he will be considered as employed next topic is usual status of the chronic unemployment in this they are taking the majority part of the year so basically if he is employed for 6 months or 182 days then he will be called as employed this way you can see like there is a basically problem in calculation of the unemployment rate even if the unemployment rate is not basically clear or true or the correct then how we can bring the measures into it firstly we have to know the actual unemployment rate what are the other issues are there firstly they calculate on the basis of labor force participation rate what it is the unemployment rate is basically if you are willing two of the basically if you are willing and capable of working these are two of the requirements to be met to be considered as unemployed so basically you should be willing to work and then you should be capable of doing the work then even if you fulfill both of the requirements but you are not getting the job then you will be considered as unemployed now think of the basically upsc aspirants or any of the aspirants preparing for any of the government exams they are basically capable of doing the work maybe but they are not willing to get the job because they are aspiring for better opportunities so they will not be counted in the labor force participation rate so they can't be considered as unemployed 
so this data is not taking the major population who is preparing for the government jobs the other thing could be women who are basically household wives may be but they are willing to work staying in the homes working from home if they get the jobs in the from the home they are able to get at the job and they are willing to work then but it is not counting those of the women so our unemployment rate is basically on the these of the two requirements but our some of the population does not fulfill them but these needs to be counted in the unemployment rate for example an sso says around 30% of the women and men ready to work if they get work within the premises but our unemployment rate is not count does not count this population next is the under reporting of the unemployment as due to the un- informal nature of the jobs that are not being counted and these un- informal nature of the jobs does not provide the security social security so they are not having the secure jobs and they are basically working in the poor or the unhygienic environment then in educate focus on the rural area sample size of calculating the unemployment is very low and in fact in that also they are focusing more and more on the urban area in educate focus on the rural area next comes the dynamic nature of the unemployment unemploy- as the employment is evolving gig economy and freelancing work but these kind of the work still not counted over the counted by our unemployment rate so our calculation of the unemployment rate needs to be made more holistic and evolvery why involving the gig economy employees and the freelancers and then the women who are wanted to work from home coming to the next question 12th question this will be the last question of our discussion where we are talking about the economy questions and first it is asking what is the difference between the care economy and the monetized economy as you know upsc always focus on the women empowerment with most of the questions has come on it maybe it can, this topic can be asked in the gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 and in gs3 also they have basically interlinked the women empowerment with economy by integrating the care economy into the monetized economy so basically firstly it is asking okay, what is the difference between the care economy and the monetized economy then how the care economy to be brought in the monetized economy through the women empowerment so it is saying how the women empowerment can help us to integrate our care economy into the monetized economy and it will help us in increasing the gdp rate and our women female labor force participation rate can be increased with it in fact one of the time our imf chief indian chief has said if the indian women can participate in the indian gdp our gdp can increase by around 27% so you can see what kind of impact a woman can bring to the gdp for this we need to integrate our care economy into the monetized economy first is what is the care economy it says it refers to the unpaid and informal care giving work so basically a mother is giving the care to the child selflessly and without any money and in fact if that woman is basically also giving the care to the old people living there but they are this is not being counted in the gdp and they she is not even getting any salary next is the monetized economy you can think of that involves the basically monetary transactions it could be buying selling goods or services so basically it is talking about the any of the monetary transactions happening there is there has to be involvement of the monetary you can understand or draw this kind of simple diagram in the exam to fetch more marks for example if you invest in the care economy it means you are creating the expansion of care employment for example 
if the hospitals or the nursing departments are to be increased with this women will get the job and we are creating the care employment in fact even if we open the hospital sectors or the old age homes so that the burden on the women can be decreased with this also we will create the employment and i have said hospitality or the old age homes it will be a labor intensive service sector it can reduce the unemployment rate obviously if there is a reduction in the unemployment rate then there will be increased in gdp it can lead to the reduction in the unpaid care work it means it is increasing the labor force participation rate as i have said if there are availability of the more hospitals or the old age homes those old persons or the basically child can get care in those of the crutches there is also recent budget has also mentioned we need to bring the basically crutches nearby the work area so that women can work more freely this way we can increase the labor force participation rate here also you need to mention as per plfs that is periodic labor force survey it is around 23 percent but it has to be increased so to increase the labor force participation rate we need a care employment with this obviously work women empowerment will happen as karl marx has said for the empowerment most important thing is economically empowering her empowerment can happen only by economy or the financial independence it has been mentioned by the karl marx so with the women empowerment again the investment in care economy will definitely happen because empowered women will be able to get the secured rights in the politics as well she will be able to secure her rights and then there will be a investment in the care economy this virtuous cycle will flow so care economy how it can be brought into the monetized economy recognize the unpaid work unpaid work needs to be recognized and the we can say the domestic workers like maids cooks whatever they are these are to be secured and this is also a informal nature of work their social security benefits are not secured and these needs to be recognized and there should be a equal pay for the equal work in fact our dpsps dpsps article 39 also basically dreams about it to bring the equal pay for for the equal work then there is a need of the social protection measures implementing the schemes like the parental leave so basically rather than the maternal leave there is also need of the paternal leave and then the work from home facility culture can be increased so that she could be able to work more freely and without any guilt and as you have seen there is a dual burden these are the topics you basically read in the gs1 but how upsc wants you think of every topic in every of the dimensions so once they have asked about the work from home in gs1 but this time they have asked about the similar topic in the gs3 so in any topic whatever the topic is if it has basically appeared in any of the exam but you have to think this topics in every dimension next is you need to bring the more healthcare and elderly services other point could be supporting the women's employment by giving the skill development and basically investing in her education as there is a scheme beti bachao beti padhao so there is a need to bring the work family balance the indian value system needs to be changed the actual basically the guilt feeling should not be there in the women while working and promoting the women entrepreneurship the examples need to be given in the schools and this culture has to be promoted next is the income generating activities through the self help groups in this also ts2 they have asked how self help groups helped in women empowerment 
आई होप द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ लिज्जित पापड़ is clear to you that is the prime example how one only 80 rupees being converted into the 100 crores company and this has been started by the women self help group with this also women empowerment can happen and how her basically papad making skill can be converted into the economics next bringing the quality and accessible child care services so that obviously she could participate more freely and there need there is need of the cultural shift we have already seen the gender stereotyping should be decreased this should not be there and we see the concept of glass ceiling it means up to if there is the basically levels in any of the organization the she can't grow to the topmost level then this should not be there she should be employed in the highest level of the employment so other women can be motivated and she could act as a example therein so basically we need to promote and for that also i want to tell you in gs4 you can read about the persuasion and social influence so next time this topic can even come in the gs4 to bring how the social influencing or the persuasion can help in bringing the basically care economy into the monetized economy so basically it can ask how the persuasion and social influence can help in the women empowerment here also you have to give some of the examples you need write write about the basically how the celebrity effect can be done so questions are the over we have discussed four of the questions of the economy we have seen how it can be asked again and how these were asked in the previous years in the multiple papers and how the syllabus lines are relevant to it and we have discussed the data <laughs> please note out that and i hope this discussion helps you we will come up with the second part where we will discuss about the agriculture questions thank you